Welcome back to the Pair Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I am your host. And on this episode, I will update you on all things to know about Prepare Like a Pro, such as announce this week's episodes, discuss this week's power tip on how you can improve your physicality on field with a couple of key exercises to perform in the gym, specifically talking about how you can perform those exercises, the intent that you need to focus on, as well as uh, dosage, so reps and sets. Answer all the questions that have been sent through this week via email, our socials, or sent live on Instagram. And of course, announce our guests for the live episode that we do Thursday at 8.30 p.m. on YouTube. And our upcoming episodes, we have a special mashup episode for our 100th interview on Tuesday. Our Get Better Plan, which is an educational episode that we do every week on Wednesday. And another interview on Friday. So let's get straight into it. Uh, In terms of our uh, episodes for this week, our 100th episode will include some snippets and gems from all the categories of at Prepare Like a Pro. So AFL players, we have sports psychologists that have been on, we have uh, strength and conditioning coaches, high performance managers, sports dietitians, and who else have we got there? They're the main ones. So we'll have all the gems provided from those different categories provided in an hour's episode. So if you want to top up on your strength and conditioning and maybe you've missed a few of the early episodes, that's definitely the one to check out because we've hand-selected the most popular episodes for you all to celebrate, 100 episodes, which is super exciting. And that was all achieved in 2021, which was a massive year, our debut year, and uh, awesome to reach 100 episodes. So if you have any questions or queries from uh, that episode or you want to watch the full episode after watching a listening to a snippet, make sure to head over to Prepare Like a Pro's uh, podcast or the YouTube to watch the vodcast episode version. The Get Better plan of this week will focus on how to improve your 2K time trial. So we'll have some conditioning uh, workouts that you can follow um, but also talk about, and more importantly, understanding how to get make the most of that program and, and the reason that we have, uh, we don't run every day, but we have set focuses of our sessions, so theme sessions, um, and we microdose our aerobic conditioning. So you're always doing a little bit of work that's going to improve your 2K time trial, but you'll have a, a theme-based session. So a feel-good typical session in the off-season, pre-season, where you can focus on your rhythm and your running efficiency and mechanics which is really, really important, and you're not pushing yourself. You're running at a pace that uh, feels comfortable and feels natural for you, so you can focus on that efficiency and you can focus on the cues, things like uh, keeping your shoulders relaxed, posture, uh, head nice and still, keeping your feet close to the ground, short, quick steps, those sort of things. Uh, as well as we have our threshold-based workouts, so that's where we can use MAS to work out your average speed that you move, whether it be in meters per second or case per hour, and we can work super maximally to that, so 110% or 120% for our threshold days. And we'll do typically anywhere from 40 meter reps up until 800 to a K meter reps. Typically, we won't do much longer than a K. So we can keep the quality um, in our training. And how we progressively overload that is reduce the rest periods between our exercises. So let's say you do um, week one, two 300 meter efforts. And you're going 60 seconds on, 60 seconds off. After a few weeks of work, you might progress that to 60 seconds on. So you're running at the same speed, but you're only resting for 30 seconds. So you're improving your ability to be able to recover between efforts while trying to maintain the same uh, average speed. So that's an example. Other ways we might uh, actually improve your your volume. So I might add a rep or add another set. So you're also increasing the amount of work that you're being done in that session. Uh, so, yeah, if you're interested to learn more about our energy system development, uh, specifically for footballers that want to improve your 2K time trial or strength and conditioning coaches that want to help footballers improve their 2K time trial, uh, that can also be applicable to the 1K efforts that are becoming popular um, or uh, whatever your fitness test might be. It might be three minutes, might be 10 minutes, run as far as you can. It's all relevant to, to this theme uh, podcast episode. 
On Thursday, we have a live interview with Jacob Tober. He's famous for running a lot of the education content along with Durham at Core Advantage. He's recently co-founded a new software uh, for all the sports science strength and conditioning coaches out there that want to track bar velocity, but you don't have access to things like Gym Aware. You can download his app called Metric, and he will um, go into a little bit more detail about why he created the app and the um, ways that that can help not only athletes track their bar's velocity, but also coaches and how, how they can use it effectively to improve uh, intent um, as well as measure um, and, and select the appropriate weights for the stimulus that you're trying to achieve. So really, really important episode. Looking forward to it. Jacob's a really smart man, so I can't wait to dive into talking about his career, his career journey, working in the private sector and all the great work that he's done at Core Advantage and more specifically around his app that he's um, about to release to the market. And then on Friday, our episode will be released with Kevin Ball. He is a biomechanist. Uh, specialist specifically in kin- kin- kinematics for AFL football, but he's also worked in a whole range of different high performance environments, rugby, uh, track and field athletics. So definitely recommend tuning into this episode, whether you're a strength and conditioning coach, biomechanist, sports scientist. Uh, he actually lectures at Victoria University. I was lucky enough to learn from him as well as work on a, an app from a dear friend from both of us, Wayne Oswald, uh, who connected us. So he's a great man, super intelligent, and you'll for those that um, want to understand the research, but more importantly, how to apply that in a practical high-performance setting, definitely tune into this episode. Uh, it's almost like a workshop on how you can improve not only the kinematics, but also Kevin talks has a real holistic view, so talking about the importance of building a relationship with a player and how he would use the gym as a place to build rapport and um, how important it is to um, use things like contrast training for not just physiology but also uh, for skill acquisition so you do like a heavy lift and then um, superset that with an isometric kicking mechanic into a a punching bag or or do some punch kicks in the indoor facility so get that contrast effect that typically we do with plyometrics he was using it to improve kicking performance so uh, it's something I've never heard of before and I think that's pretty cool so make sure to tune in to that one so that episode will be released on Friday for those that missed out our first live collaborated event it's a new segment that we're doing ideally once a month we're going to i'm going to host one of these and our first one was nutrition for sports for performance specifically focusing on australian rules football i was lucky enough to have five afl experienced sports dietitians join us for this live collaborative event where there was bite size information so um, it was 10 minutes each guest and they selected a particular topic to focus on Uh, I absolutely loved it, uh, got a lot out of it and and found it was super informative as well as a great way just to either refresh on some knowledge or um, learn some new things. Um, So make sure whether you're developing football or trying to up your game in the nutrition space, improve your recovery, your preparation, uh, or maybe you're you're injured and you want to accelerate your recovery process, definitely tune into this um, episode and you can watch it. It's sitting on our YouTube channel. Go to the playlist, Prepare Like a Pro. I'll add the link in our show notes and you can watch the full episode. It goes for about an hour uh, and it's jam-packed with with information and that's something we're going to do once a month, so stay tuned for the next one. Okay, let's stream over to Instagram now for our live segment. If you have any questions, those listening in live as well, feel free to send them in via the chat box. Okay, uh, Jai. All right, tuning over to Instagram Live now to answer your questions. Okay, Instagram world, firstly, this week's power tip will be on AFL physicality, so how to improve your physical ability on the field. So things like contested positions, whether it be contested ground balls, uh, jostling for a contested mark, 
um, as well as ha- not only how to hold your space, but also how to uh, dominate the opponent and get best position to be able to win the ball. So I'll present on that shortly, but first we'll go into your questions for those that tuned in uh, this week and sent us questions either via email at jacketpreparelikeapro.com or sending direct messages. So first question, and if you're listening in live, feel free to send in your questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Is from Rachel. She wrote, hi, Jack. Been listening to your podcast on my morning walks lately. Love the content. Thanks, Rach. Uh, I was wondering if you had any content on warm-ups for AFL training and for an on-game day for local level. Absolutely, Rachel. Great question. When it comes to warm-ups, we want to first work back from what is the session that we're preparing for. So you mentioned training sessions at local level, but you also mentioned game day. So let's let's take on warm-ups for training sessions first. So what we'll know with your training sessions is you'll typically have your main session of the week, which will be quite taxing on the body. It will be dynamic with your change of direction work. It could be could expose you to high speed. It certainly will expose you to high kicking volumes and long distance kicks. And, um, and you're going to get some collisions as well with the competitive drills like small-sided games. So for those main sessions, those ones should be a little bit longer, anywhere up to 10, 10 to 15 minutes. And we want to start with some um, gentle movement around the ground, so things like backwards pedaling, side shuffles, some karaoke's, light jogging, and then into some sort of run drills, um, some ground-based mobility drills like uh, hammy scrapes, um, hip flexor stretching, um, moving in the frontal plane, so stretching out your hips like uh, lateral squats uh, with the outside leg being straight to, to warm up your groins. Uh, then we want to start working on some ankle stiffness, so to really warm up our tendons and prime them for the power-based work that we'll be doing later on with your Axel d work in the skills program. So things like pogo jumps where we're keeping your knees stiff and we're trying to be as elastic as we can through our ankles keeping our big toes up towards the sky. Uh, We can do some broad jumps and then focus on some landing mechanics, uh, some single leg skater hops. Uh, So they're great for just preparing our body for for deceleration activities as well as work on your first three steps in your acceleration. So some static starts where you're really loading up the front foot and working on short compact arms and leaning forward um, as well as some uh, top end efforts. Maybe you'll do a couple of sprints. I always like to microdose my sprinting, which is just simply getting some exposure to sprinting uh, throughout the warm ups. It doesn't need to be top end sprinting, but just around that 90%. Uh, one or two efforts with a walk return over 40 meters as a great way to prime the body both physically you know, in terms of your muscles, connective tissues, but also neurally as well to excite your muscles and get you ready for a high quality session. So that's it in terms of football training. Um, for those that have trained with me and they've, they've been coaching me on the field, you'll, you will know that I'll focus on preparing your body. And I'll also use that time to um, improve your running efficiency. So we'll do some sort of run drills and running mechanics that's specific to how you run. So that's how I take on uh, warm-ups in terms of training. When it comes to game day, it's, it's different. We're focusing on performance. So we want to make sure that, that each player has the opportunity to have an individual preparation. So there's a, a window of 10 to 15 minutes where they can do their own thing. Some players just want to chill. Uh, some players want to do some extra boxing around loud music. Other players want to have a, a bit of a chat and um, take their mind off the game with maybe um, the coaches or, or physios or other players. Um, so we want to make sure, number one, that every player has about 10 to 15 minutes of their own time. They might do some injury prevention work to warm up their body. So whatever they need to tick off to get ready. And then typically we'll have two warm-ups. So first one's very much getting the body ready uh, for training. So that will be all physical base with, with very little football involved. Come back in, have the brief with the coach. And then the last warm-up is where we stay on the ground. So they've got their guernseys on, mouth guards are on, and that's where it's a lot more of a football-based program. Um, and you want to make sure that the, the team has a good opportunity to uh, the mids to kick to the forwards, um, the backs to work together as a unit, and you want to work on that team cohesion across your three big lines. Um, so that's where the footballs are heavily involved in the second warm-up. The intensity is nice and high. You're getting some collision-based stuff with some small-sided games, uh, and you're really priming the players for for um, to be ready to start from the get-go. Um, so that's a general overlay of how we'll prepare for for game day. What type of drills you do, you just work with the coaches and the leaders um, and you, and 
we're about a month away from practice matches starting. Practice matches are a perfect time for players to play around with their individual time on game day, as well as the team to play around with what works best. Uh, and sometimes you, you you might sack the DJ as well for whatever player uh, isn't getting the, the playlist right, which is pretty critical um, by round one. So there's some of the important factors for um, warm up in your training as well as game day. The other questions were all around the sports nutrition event that we that I hosted on Thursday night, and it was from Lauren, Jackson, Ethan, and Corey, all around the same question. It was basically, hi, Jack, just wondering how I can watch the recording of the sports nutrition event. So for you guys, the best place to go would be our YouTube channel. We haven't released that on our podcast yet, but you can watch the full recording on our YouTube channel. Um, if you're on Instagram and you're watching live, you just head to our – click the link in our Instagram to go straight to that uh episode and if you're watching from uh listening in from in the podcast world or you're watching live from youtube then i would just go straight to our youtube channel go to the prepare like a pro podcast playlist that we'll have in our show notes and that will be the first one off the rank there uh, it's called sports performance uh, nutrition for sports performance absolutely recommend tuning in for that one uh, even if you're not a footballer preparing yourself for a season the practitioners, whether you're a physio, strength and conditioning coach, sports dietitian, will get a lot out of listening to that as well. Uh, the guests provided heaps of gems, so make sure to tune in. As I mentioned, the um, power tip for this week is on physicality. So we are going to focus on how you can improve your grip strength. Sometimes you'll see and you would have experienced it on the field where you don't have the ability to grab the opponent with both arms. You've just grabbed on and by the skin of your teeth with your fingers. So we're making sure that we've got strong fingers Fingers on the field can help you be able to grab that opponent a little bit closer so you can actually stick the tackle. So things like rock climbing, and if you, if you don't have access to rock climbing, then maybe at your gym they'll have those rock climbing apparatus set up at the chin-up station. That's what they're there for to develop your finger strength. So we're not actually focusing on gripping around the palms. We want to focus on just gripping at our fingertips for that exercise for the purpose of improving your finger strength. We can also do plate carries, so holding the weight plates and just going for like a farmer's walk um, is another great way that you can do it. Or you can just do that incidentally in between your squats, deadlifts, bench press, all those heavy lifts where you're unpacking the bar, do the finger grip version. Don't hold it in the palms, hold it at the end of the fingertips and hold it for as long as you can to develop your finger strength. Um, so that's, that's a really good aspect and something that's underutilized. You can get a good competitive edge by working on that. Uh, pulling strength, so working on developing our lats that's where we do want to work on gripping the, the dumbbell and the whatever the external load is, barbell, dumbbell, or chin-ups, any pulling exercise where you're pulling external load to you to help you for that on-field performance where you do grab the jumper and you're pulling them in to be able to get your arms over them. That's where we want to make sure we're gripping as hard as possible and you're doing short rep ranges like six and under at heavy load. So dumbbell, single arm dumbbell, rows are a great exercise, bent over rows with a barbell, dumbbell, uh, prone bench rows, prone rows, also known as, um, and make sure that you're maximally gripping that bar as hard as you can and you're not letting it slip to the fingertips. So that's a great way to develop your pulling strength, which is really important for that wrestling type combative work, um, especially our key position players and inside mids. Then you've got your rotational power exercises. So for those, you want to make sure that you're um, rotating from the ankle, the hip, and the shoulder. So torsionator is a really great tool for that. Uh, as well as power bands and cables. So practicing rotating that. And so we're transferring the force from our legs through to our upper body um, by being able to keep a stable and, and engaged trunk. So that's where the core strength comes into it, as well as um, the coordinating the, the limbs. So practicing rotation is really important because a lot of the time you for, to do a dominant tackle or to try and stick your tackle, the opponent might be moving at speed. So to be able to absorb that force where the strength comes in and then have the power through to be able to rotate through the hips and the feet to be able to um, slam them to the ground. So rotational exercises are really, really important. Um, and then, of course, frontal plane strength exercises with our legs. So thinking lower body, lateral squats, uh, holding a, you know, the dumbbell in the goblet position or bar on the back. Uh, we'll have things like a, a Copenhagen or bench reductions to strengthen our groins. Um, might have side plank, side um, raises, so strengthening our glute med. So these can be some great exercises to develop your glutes, 
your and your aerodactors to be able to shrug the opponents off um, using your hips. So that lateral movement is really, really important and typically not used for those that have only done bodybuilding type of training. Um, so making sure that you have got these frontal plane movements for to help you on the field because a lot of the time we will be moving in that plane on field performance. So um, that's really, really important. And it would be um, remiss of me if I didn't express to improve your physicality. The st- all this strength work that I mentioned is really, really important, but I've seen it a lot of my time working with footballers, people can get incredibly strong on the field and they do all the great things, but then they don't practice it in training. So make sure if you're a ruckman, obviously you're practicing um, throw-ins with the, the biggest player in your squad uh, and, you're, and you're practicing things like, okay, is this player um, super strong with their upper body but weak through the legs? So I'm going to try and um, use that to my advantage. So you, the ability for you to be able to read the game tactically, know your opponent and their strengths, know your strengths compared to your, your opponent, we understand weaknesses and be able to exploit that um, is undervalued. So those um, mental sides really important. And, of course, the aggressiveness and being super competitive and having that drive to win is also underestimated. So you can be super strong in the gym, but it won't transfer until you've got those mental uh, that mental knowledge on how to use it and also the physicality and the aggressiveness to be able to apply it on field. Um, so that's really, really important. And that's just like any skill, you've got to be able to practice that in your training and practice it in different situations, under pressure, controlled setting, work on your footwork, uh, and make sure you're being exposed to lots of different stressful situations that uh, may pop up in on a game. That's it for this episode. Remember our live chat with Jacob Tober at 8.30 p.m. this Thursday, um, who created the app Metric, which tracks bar velocity. You will not want to miss that one. And thank you for Casey Jew, who wrote this amazing review on our podcast. She wrote, great podcast to listen to when driving myself to footy or work. Listening to what they have to say really helped me improve my athletic development specific to football. So thank you for that, Casey. Um, If you're listening to this episode, I'd really appreciate a review on iTunes or you can rate us on Spotify um, and that will help us help more people like Casey by spreading the message and um, really helping us to get around to more people. So really appreciate your support and I'll see you guys on the next episode.